Wilmslow Golf Club, average golfer, PXG. Yes, that's right, I'm here at the wonderful Wilmslow Golf Club in the heart of Cheshire and uh, that green behind me looks uh, pretty decent to be fair. Anyway, what we're we here for? Well, we're here to test the PXG 0211 irons, the brand new irons from PXG. They're very much more affordable irons from PXG, but the question I want answering, if they're more affordable, what kind of compromises are we gonna have to make from the Gen 2s? Only one way to find out. Let's get in some golf balls and see how these PXG 0211s perform in the hands of the average golfer. Right, okay, so thank you for joining the Average Golfer. Lawrence from PXG again. Uh, you're on this channel quite a lot, mate, of late, aren't you? Everybody knows who you are more than me now, I think. Well, more popular. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get straight into this 0211 irons. I'm really, I'm excited and apprehensive at the same time because I, I think if you watch the channel, everyone knows I'm a bit of a PXG fanboy. I love the Gen 2 irons. And I'm hoping that these don't disappoint because obviously there's a price difference. There's some changes in there. We've gone from a forged head into a cast head. Is there going to be compromises in certain areas in terms of feel and overall performance? I have no idea because I've not, I've not said there's not even a shaft on her head as yet. So Lawrence is going to get me set up. We've got two shaft options. Uh, is it two steel options? We're going to go very similar to where we, where you finished off previously in yeah. Gen 2 fittings. Uh, very similar shaft. We're going to go for the true temporary. So. I hope you got that um, in terms of the uh, audio true temper elevate shaft. I've used this shaft before as well. I do like this. So we'll see how we get on. Get that head into that shaft, mate. Let's get it into some golf balls. I'm getting excited. Right, so before we go back into the bay right behind you and start hitting some of these uh, PXG 0211 irons, I want comments down below. I want your feedback. What are your thoughts on this new priced bracket that PXG have dropped these irons to? Does that make it more appealing? How many more of you will now consider purchasing a set of PXG irons? Comments down below, let's have some feedback. In terms of feel, again, a bit bit surprised in terms of the cast head with the feel it's producing. What's inside the head in terms of, we've got an insert uh, foam or something in there? So or? it's CO2, same as what we carry through the Gen 2 range. So that's exactly the same, is it? Yeah. No change in there. Because again, they managed to produce a feel out of the club. I don't think you can pick that one up in terms of sound from the face. They've, they've uh, managed to do something in terms of uh, feel, sound, resonate maybe in the same thing, I don't know, but um, yeah, the, the, there's a slight surprise, uh, and, a, and surprise in a good way is what I mean, in terms of the feel. The one thing I was concerned about is, I'm not a lover of cast clubs in general, yeah. um, but they've managed to do something by where they've achieved, I'm hoping you're picking it up on the camera in terms of the strike because they managed to achieve something where that combination of whether it's the foam, I don't know. 
but it's got it's got a far better feel than I was expecting. Yeah, so the the COR material inside is just dampening it down for you. Yeah, it gives it that very soft perception. It's dampening it down what in terms of feel or sound or both? Uh, just makes it feel much better. Yeah, because the sound is not. Uh, it's got a nice soft sound to it as well. Right. Ball is flying out there in terms of. I mean, 31 degrees aloft on this 7 iron, um, so it sits somewhere in the middle. It's not strong lofted, but it's not your sort of 34, 35 old school uh, 7 iron either. Um, I'd be interested to know in terms of um, the forgiveness as well. It seems to be I'll never get the ball out of the middle of this face consistently but it's producing fairly consistent results from what I'm seeing visually. So We've got the average carry over the last 10 shots is, is 168.9 to 169 yards. Yeah. Uh, ball speed's up at 113 yeah. uh, with, with a smash of like 139. So, you know, as, as, far, as far as sort of numbers go, obviously direction is a little bit down to you, but yeah. numbers in terms of yardage and so on, it's very, very forgiving and consistent. That's hitting your, about four yards beyond your typical sort of 40, 31 loft seven iron fit isn't it? Uh, for me I, um, and again you, you, you all watch reviews there's, uh, there's no hiding places in these things uh, 165 would be a good number for me uh, on my extremes in terms of uh, 31 degrees worth of loft on a 7 yeah. I mean every ball I've hit on camera to be fair although you're not seeing ball flight as such I can tell you the ball flight's been really really good uh, picking it up nice and easy good penetrating ball flight as I said. The one other interesting thing I just want to make reference to, and I'll get closer with this, or I hope I remember to do anyway, is the actual profile of the club sat behind the ball. Um, I think they did this on previous irons, on the Gen 2 irons, it's sort of a chamfered uh, top line. So there's a, an optical illusion of a very thin top line, which appeals to me visually sat behind the ball, but it just sort of, uh, as I say, chamfers off a little bit. Um, the actual profile of the head itself um, sits again, it's not very small, it's not on the bulky side either, and it sits very much, uh, it frames the ball nice, doesn't seem to be a great deal of offset on there. And um, I think the other thing to note, I can't stop hitting these things, sorry, is that this is a, a combination set, I suppose. So if you're familiar with the PXG clubs from Gen 2, then they've got uh, the player's iron that then goes into the XF irons. And what they've done here is uh, sort of pitch and wedge through to seven iron, is the player's irons. And then there's a bit of a switch over into a profile, a head shape that is similar uh, to that of the XF into those longer irons. So that's again uh, a good combination as far as I'm concerned for the average golfer out there. I mean, I don't know whether we're still recording. We're still recording. I just don't think they can pick up the sound uh, because I think that's the. I can't. You can't describe feel. Yeah, Someone's got to have a go. But I mean, in terms of the sound, I think you can pick up a lot from the way this club sounds. Oh, definitely. I'm holding a pose. You know, I'm holding a finish. I was. <laughs> yeah, they're decent balls. Like I said. I, it's always difficult to film from the back side looking out because it's so dark at the back end of a driving bay. But uh, those last two are sort of one seventy-two carry, yeah. one seventy point yeah. five as well. They were solid, and they're down the line as well. Oh, bullet straight! Just leak that one out a tad to the right, but again, same ball flight. It'd probably be a little bit short in terms of distance, um, but I wouldn't imagine a great deal of difference there, Collins. Oh, there's two yards difference in carry. Yeah, which again was uh, that uh, strike from me. Um, it's an interesting one because like I said, I came here perhaps with a little bit of a preconceived idea. I thought we were uh, lowering the price point and a significant uh, change in price points. Forged over to Cass, like I mentioned earlier, and I thought we were going to be giving up things that um, yeah, would be compromises that I wouldn't want to make really because I'm such a fan, like I said, of the PXG original irons or the Gen 2 irons. Uh, but at the moment, I've only hit 7 iron. I've got to say the performance at these things has been so, so impressive. And then putting them at this price point, 
I think it's going to be a possible big game changer in terms of obviously affordability is a major thing and it brings them right back into a category where I think a lot more golfers would be prepared to pay this kind of money for this kind of set of irons. There. I was able to switch the camera around and hopefully it was a little bit dark back there but hopefully you were able to see at least some of those ball flights and help aid the description that I was giving you like I said the balls getting out there but the interesting bit for me I just mentioned maybe you picked it up on camera there was the balls that are perhaps not struck so good so a little bit of mat on a couple of those but the actual overall performance of the golf ball is not dropping off too much and even with what I'm seeing out there in the range and backed up by the numbers that Lawrence was shouting out there. Even with these off-centre strikes, there wasn't a great deal of loss in performance, and that's the real bit that interests me uh, as an average golfer when I'm testing these golf clubs. Right, so, okay, so it's time for a summary and overall assessment of the 0211 irons, but I'm gonna do this in two ways. I'm gonna assess the 0211s in their own right in terms of performance, and then I am gonna make reference to the Gen 2 irons, even though this review has nothing to do with them in reality. So. The 0211 irons, what have they done? Well, they've achieved something that I've never felt, I suppose, before and heard. And that's sound and feel out of a cast club is the best that I have tested, period. You can have that one, Bob. Uh, it, they've just, I, I don't know quite how it's been achieved. Um, it was something I was really worried about because it's such a good thing about the Forge Gen 2 irons that I was concerned that a cast club would have a sound and feel that I wasn't particularly familiar, uh, comfortable with uh, and I have got a thing against that but no they've done a fantastic job of, uh, of achieving an unreal uh, sense of feel and sound. Second thing obviously is the performance, the performance was very very good indeed, uh, they look superb. One note to mention on the finish itself, um, there's a black strip that you'll see on the demo clubs that we tested today. In a production models that's going to be an all chrome or all brushed uh, chrome finish, so that's not what you'll see as a finished product in terms of what you'll buy. Um, and the performance of them was very, very good indeed. Uh, the yardage is right up there in terms of where I'd expect them to be. Spin number was where I'd expect it to be for me. And ultimately, I mean, the question that uh, you would ask is, would you put these in the bag and game them? And without a shadow of a doubt, I'll put them in right now. So I can't say any more than that. What I would say about these irons is the best thing to do is they're in a price category that I think a lot more people would be prepared to give them a go. And that's what I'd ask you to do. Go out and give them a go and see if you can find any fault in these clubs, any disagreement with what I've just said. That's the challenge I'm setting you because I cannot see how you can pick fault with these clubs. I really can't. And like I said, what they've achieved in terms of the sound and feel out of a cast club, I don't understand because it's nothing like what I've tested before. So a massive thumbs up in terms of the 0211s. But I asked at the beginning what are the compromises that are being made from that from the Gen 2. And there are a few uh, shaft options, is it's limited in terms of what's included you can pay for upgrades but uh, a lot of the included shafts in the gen 2 don't appear uh, in the 0211 irons um, the perimeter weighting that you see in the gen 2s isn't in the 0211s and again the perimeter weighting very much uh, assists in terms of MOI and I think there's a slight drop off uh, from what I read in terms of data on MOI on these irons although performance wise this morning I never witnessed any of that whatsoever um, the, the looks, I think, is, a, is an either or. That's up to you. On a personal level, being perfectly honest, I prefer the looks of the Gen 2. They've got a very distinct, a very unique look. Some people don't like it, but I was really drawn to those irons, and I really like And as you know, I'm, I just put them so high in terms of uh, m what my own personal preferences are. And the feel, again, the forge into the cast, we're talking about splitting airs, but there is a softer feel out of the Gen 2 irons as well in that Forge Club, which is, again, ultimately what you'd expect. And I think, to be honest with you, the changes, um, or the differences, rather, 
between the two are what you'd expect. I don't think it'd have been fair to people who own Gen 2 irons to not see and recognise there is a difference between the two sets of irons. But what they've managed to do, PXG, they've produced an unbelievably good set of irons at a price point which I know is still very, very expensive, but I think is a lot more accessible to much more golfers. And I think we're going to see a lot more of these in the bags of average golfers uh, in the months ahead. Anyway, like I said, the challenge is go out and try them yourself and uh, give me some feedback, give me some comments. Do you disagree with what I've said? Because that's the challenge. There's, it's very hard to pick fault with these clubs. Right, that's me done. Thank you to PXG. Thank you to Wilmslow Golf Club. Thank you to you for watching. Hit the like button, comments down below, and I'll see you very, very soon. I'm gonna get inside and have a bit of a drink.